Okay, so I know how you said you like meaningless videos. Appreciate you guys that have stuck around through all this stuff. So we're working on this thing again today. It wouldn't start yesterday. And we're gonna take the, I took the AFC housing off. I haven't pulled it yet. I waited for you guys so I could show you this. But if you guys ever have issues with this screw right here on the back of the AFC, what I'll do is take a good flathead screwdriver and I'll put a nice big vice grip on it. Because what happens if you're just trying to push down and twist, it ends up popping itself up and then you'll strip the screw. Um, as you can see, this one's been into a couple of times, but using the vice grips, it allows you to get some leverage off of it. So it acts like a breaker. So I'm gonna pull this off and we're gonna check out what's on the inside. Now, what I can tell you is that someone was in here at one point. Now, I'm not taking this off to modify anything, but somebody was in it. You can see, see how there's a tamper-proof screw there and there's a tamper-proof screw there. So nobody's ever messed with the pre-boost adjustment or anything inside of here, but they have messed with this, which it does look like to be in a pretty factory location. They might've put it back, but I know some of it was in that because this was used as a cap. And then I also know that this was off at one point because the tamper-proof screw is missing. So you look down there, the, uh, the fuel plate is all right there. You can see, so I don't know if the fuel plate was ever moved. I'm gonna pull the, actually, yeah, it, it definitely was because it's all the way forward. So yeah, somebody did mess with the fuel plate. So I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna check it out. And um, it looks like a factory plate, but who knows, maybe somebody modified it. But my thing is, I wanna see down in there and see if the fuel shutoff is working the correct way. Cause like it feels pretty loose. I'm not sure how these should really feel in general, but I'm hoping that maybe it's just something stuck. And when you give it throttle, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly move all that far. So we'll, we'll check it out when we get in there. Um, slow and steady, but yeah, I'm gonna take my screwdriver and get that fuel plate out. All right, so just as I suspected, those screws are super tight, so I'm gonna have to do what I did with the vice grips over there. I'm gonna tell you, so judging by this and looking at the P-pump, if you're the guy that just takes a fuel plate and pushes it all the way forward and doesn't understand how these pumps work, you shouldn't be working on them. And you do need to have an understanding before you modify these. You also need to have an understanding that if you're gonna be looking for a motor, you're gonna probably find one that has the issues that this does. Now. What I mean is if you're gonna add more fuel, but you're gonna keep the timing stock and you're gonna keep this all stock, you're not doing yourself any benefit, but just adding smoke and it's unnecessary. So if you're gonna modify and put a different fuel plate in here or put a, you know, move the fuel plate forward, understand that you're really just hurting yourself. You're adding EGTs for no reason. Yes, I get it. You know, it adds a little bit of power, but it's not the right way. So I'm gonna get that out and we'll look at it from there. All right, so here's the screws that come out of it. This was for something completely different. That was the AFC. But these are the screws that hold the fuel plate in. Make sure that you do not drop them as you're pulling them out. Oh, look at that. That is an, not a stock plate. Actually, that is a stock plate, but somebody ground it down to be a 100 plate. So basically it's all flat and then, yeah. So this was completely pointless putting that in, which tells me Yeah. Something's wrong. Yeah, that's the problem. Looks like the foot is actually stuck in there. So I'm gonna try to pry that free and we'll see if we can get some power to this pump. So it's suspicious that the previous owner knew that was the first thing to look for. So it's like when he sold this motor, he knew that something was wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and start messing with that. So now it's hard to see down there. I'll try to show you guys, but the rack is stuck you guys can see that so with the if i turn the fuel on see how this arm moves that's all the way on but you can't i can't free it up so i'm gonna try and drop some wd-40 down in there let it soak and everything um forums are saying the only way to really fix it is one you get lucky or two you have to rebuild the pump so hoping that we can just get lucky and it works for the guy, let it make him some money first and then we'll come back at it later and replace the injection pump. But I'd like to get this thing running for the guy, but that is 100% what is going on with this thing right now. Well, that's pretty much it. I am gonna take 
and spray it down with some oil clean oil and um, let it soak for a little while and then we'll come back to it and try and see if I can't break it free but basically two options let's try to break it free or we have to replace the pump it sucks but it is definitely stuck where it's not supposed to be and um, that means that it's not gonna run all right so I got it sprayed down I'm gonna get the hood closed just let it soak over the weekend and I'll come back to it maybe tomorrow we'll see um, pretty much this weekend if I get time because tomorrow it's supposed to be like 95 from what they said I need to get this thing done. Okay, I need to get the windshield out of it. This is um, I'll probably roll this video into two So maybe you do get to see it But I was wondering where this guy was getting his water from when he was cleaning his truck Apparently this thing's been holding water and he's been getting it from like little spots here So he actually came yesterday and cleaned it So it looks pretty damn good Minus a flare. So this guy should be here today. So I'm gonna head home. We're having taco night. I did sell him front wheel caps. So there's those. So they cleaned up very well. I took the ones, I had a subscriber actually send me some. So I took those and put them on mine because they were in a lot nicer condition. And then he kind of like went through and refurbished those. So this thing looks pretty nice now. And then we have 17 by 9 inch wheels coming for this so we're gonna get rid of the factory dually spacer and just put on a single wheel front because it'll look better and the thing is they're designed with this exact like this hub pattern so they'll match the back so this will have the single wheel front and ultimately it'll look a lot cleaner it'll be a lot safer i think because i don't have to worry about having a dually spacer because i've seen a lot of guys actually lose these spacers when they're driving down the road because it's just something you don't check all right guys so we are back on the road we're headed to new jersey right now to go drop off this bed i just filmed an entire clip and the gopro completely deleted it so i'm gonna do it again and i'm gonna show you guys basically what's going on we got the ac rolling right now so nice and cool but Here's what we got going on. So I got two straps pulling right here, two straps pulling here, and then one pulling towards the center. We got a fuel tank. This thing is uh, all strapped down, good to go. We're a little wide. I think the bed from front to back is like eight and a couple of inches. So I think we'll be all right to get it to New Jersey. No issues there. Um, AC is super cold. Gonna check the tire temperatures because TPMS is saying we're getting a little hot on the rear right, but it always does that. But I'd like to just verify it to be sure. Um, you can't ever be too cautious with that stuff because I forgot a spare. So I'm gonna go ahead and check it now. See what the sidewall temperatures are. 125. I want to check this side because these are the ones that I'm pretty concerned about. Sorry about the exhaust, a little loud. Yeah, they're not bad. 106 so TPMS is wrong um, that's the only issue I've had with that TPMS is that the uh, inside or the the out the right rear tires have always been off like right now if I read it come on there we go uh, it's saying it's 120 degrees now but it that's way off so like I was saying, I'm going to get rolled out. We have about two hours until our drop-off, and I should be able to drive that completely. And being that this is a local run, I'm not using a single thing of fuel, which is awesome. So just running the truck. The truck has been run on waste oil now um, completely for the last, I'd like to say, a little over 2,000 miles. So no issues there. Ever since I switched over to the oil filters, everything has been great. That is the only issue I ever had with the waste oil was clogging filters. And I've realized now that I'm running, you know, 24 micron oil filters, problems have just been absolutely none. And since I gutted the fuel filter that sits up on the front, we actually have pretty good fuel pressure. Uh, 36 PSI out of a stock pump, and that's pretty good. So I'm happy with that, and hey, let's get rolling. Um, also, guys, let me know what this thing is because I uh, used it, or I got it out of my camper. And I want to know what it is. My fiance hates it. I like it. I think it's kind of cool. It's like just, uh, it's on a stick. So I'm going to keep that around because I think it's kind of neat. 
need to find a permanent spot for it, but you know, whatever. Okay, so we have about 40 minutes till we get there. I'm gonna get out and check these straps. Still running the AC, cause it is uh, 92 right now in New Jersey. So, see how well our strap job's coming along. Pretty good. Ain't budged at all. we didn't rub any holes in our hoses up here I don't like that placement but it is what it is we couldn't put it long ways because of the headache rack and all this stuff so to do it the way that it needed to be done was this way so pretty even from side to side uh, I think I think if you look at both sides it might be a little far over this way but not a big deal so just uh, it wasn't gonna get perfect it was a one-person job so it is what it is but like I said, about 40 minutes, we're expected to be there in between 5.30 and 6 o'clock, so that's what I told him, and yeah, we should, we're, we're doing pretty good, so no issues thus far. Well guys, I just hit 565,000 miles. I know the dash says 526, but you gotta add 39,000 to that. So when I bought the cluster, they sent me the wrong number. So 565,000 miles on the, oh, we just, we just hit one mile. All right, so we got everything dropped. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a mud pit here, but you know we're out here off roading in the two wheel drive truck. So I'm gonna head home now. And I was hoping I had enough content for a video tomorrow, but apparently not. I'm gonna have to probably roll this into another day. So it's like pull out here. All right, so that was a pretty simple uh, 1,100 bucks I got for everything, and that's all out the door. I don't gotta worry about any of that stuff anymore. So we're about three hours from home. Didn't cost me a dime in fuel because that all oil. New Jersey sucks. Fuel prices out here, I saw it was like 6.20 a gallon out here. So PA, New Jersey area, California, New York, like fuel prices are just absolutely astronomical. But it doesn't directly affect me. All right, so I'm not all sure what I filmed yesterday. I forgot to grab a picture of this with the bed on it for the uh, thumbnail or for Instagram to show those guys and give them updates, but we did get the bed, it's all done. It's the next day, it's like 97 degrees outside. GoPro died, so I gotta film this with my phone, but we're gonna go over this thing now. It is 225, and I'm gonna see if I can't get this rack unstuck, because I know he doesn't wanna have to buy a pump. Nobody wants to have to buy a pump, it's ridiculously expensive. So I'm gonna grab my vice grips and whatnot to get all that. At some point, I'm gonna have to get all this stuff out of the bed, and uh, a lot of it's just scrap and whatnot. So he said he doesn't really have a place to get rid of all that, so I'm gonna do that for him. So if you guys, uh, I guess this is the rest of a video, but here she is. You guys see yesterday or the day before, we have the rack that was stuck down in there. Um, we basically have two choices, try to free it up or get it rebuilt. So hopefully it's as simple as releasing it and we can hear this thing fire up which is what I'm pretty much gonna do. If you guys saw, I didn't film anything yesterday when I was dropping the bed. You guys can see the guy's driveway. I had to drive, it was like a foot deep of a puddle in mud. So this thing just got absolutely annihilated. I'm gonna have to clean it at some point. I'm right, not sure where I left off, but I was able to get the pump in the on position. And then if you turn it off, it gets back to stuck. So it's definitely, you know, it's gonna need a couple of reworkings. I'm gonna put the AFC housing back on right now just to be able to start it. And then we'll just have to use six gear to shut it off or choke it for air or something. We'll see. So I'm going to get all that thrown back on. I'm not going to put the fuel plate back in just to, just because that way I can, you know, quick take it in, on and off. Hopefully she starts and runs good. It sounded pretty healthy when we were cranking it, but we'll see. So also there was a cap for that. Um, he needs to get a uh, cap at some point. So it's three bolts here and then... You know one airline there all right so i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to start it i got all the lines and everything put back on i haven't verified anything just in case it were to try to start with one cylinder down the only way i have of turning this thing off is using the clutch unless the fuel shut off does want to work i only put it on with uh two bolts because obviously it's going to come back off i didn't put the fuel plate in or anything but i want to see if it works and if it does then we know then we can start working on that uh that sh the uh shut off in there so 
Liam's gonna film. Sorry if his uh, angles are a little shaky. Wait, how is it starting without using the key? Oh, I heard that. That's fuel. It's trying. We have a running 12 out. Listen to that. Now, we don't have any coolant in it. Just basically wanted to hear it start. No key, we didn't put the key in it. The ignition switch isn't working with the new key for some reason. Let's shut this off. Okay, the fuel shut off works. Let's see if it starts itself back up. All right, so I just turned the fuel back on. I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle just to, you know, make sure that the pump is on. See if it works. And then we know this pump is savable. Look at that. All right. Pump savable. That's a good sign. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to pull the injection pump back apart. You know, spray more oil in there, just, you know, let it keep going back and forth with it. Basically how I did it, big pry bar, little bit of a tappy tappy with the mallet. So that way we can get it to go back and forth and back and forth. So it is uh, now working. We've got the pumps all freed up. Um, at some point we need to go grab, probably do that tomorrow. I just need to hook up two more coolant lines and then we can fill this thing with coolant and the coolant reservoir waiting on that. And he has a uh, power steering line. So we can't drive it until the power steering lines are in, but I'm gonna call him, let him know the good news and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, we have a running, let me see. I wanna make sure the throttle works and everything. So I'm gonna start it right back up. How does it turn on like Put that? that. One wire there. Yeah, I think definitely need to work a little bit on that pump because I think that's what happened there because we have the fuel on so that or it ran out of fuel one or the other but let's see there wasn't any smoke if you guys can see here there's no it's not blowing any smoke or anything it did there just now because of it shutting off like that but there was no smoke so that's a good sign that tells me we have a pretty healthy engine all right guys you can see down there that is a good sign uh let me see you guys can see, off, on. That's a good sign. Look at that, moving nice and freely. So now we have a running truck and it, it will move. So it runs and drives, but power steering lines and coolant. And we are golden. So I'm gonna put the fuel plate back in, get it all tightened down for them. Super happy with that. That is awesome. So we are literally on the home stretch of him having a running driving project. And for the guys wondering how much you know we charge to do one of these, um, I've pretty much you know this is a worst case scenario. Like you guys saw the whole progress. The guy put the engine in, did it wrong, I had to pull it out, regasket it, do all that. Two different wire harnesses waiting on parts. That's what ultimately took this. If you bring a complete truck with a motor set aside with all the sensors and every like a complete motor all set aside this can all be done in less than 40 hours if you don't need the new motor regasketed it's 30 hours you know in between 30 and 35 hours but general average is between 35 and 45 hours to do the entire swap at 95 an hour so you're looking you know on a on the cheap side about 2850 up to like 4450 to do a complete engine swap and on the higher end would be if you need it, you know, all regasketed and whatnot. 
So not all in all, it's not too bad because the money you'll save running an older engine like this is definitely really worth it. It will pay for itself, especially if you're doing what I'm doing, because that is all oil in that ox tank. There's I, I've sworn away diesel completely. So I can really run whatever I want. And this engine is no exception here. Also, you get to run paper logs if you're a commercial, because as per FMCSA, the year of the engine is what matters. That is one of the exceptions that they have in there. It goes off of the year of the truck first, and then they go off of the year of the engine. It's weird because they have this exemption separate, but it is in there and it is verified. I've, I've passed multiple, multiple audits, I think three or four audits now with this truck and have had no issues. So it will pay for itself. Also, when you need injectors, a, um, a set of injectors, if you need injectors in your common rail, you buying injectors is basically buying a used motor for one of these like you can get these for about two to twenty five hundred bucks right now sometimes upwards of three thousand or you can just buy a brand new motor for like fifty five hundred i think it was or like you doing six injectors will pay for the engine itself so if you pull a running engine and sell it you can probably get the swap done for almost free if you do it yourself it'll you know you'll profit off of it but if you pay somebody you know it'll probably cost upwards of about eight thousand dollars total to do this swap which is why i'd just recommend getting a new engine for it but if you're going to spend eight thousand dollars you know half of it's the motor half of it's the labor i'm glad that i did it i did this swap in a weekend and it cost me 1500 bucks here you go for the guys asking now let me get this pump back together you guys can see here this is a factory fuel plate you know you can tell it's a factory fuel plate because they got the little dimples up here the little nubs that come up rivets whatever but you can see that it's shaved somebody did that this is a 100 plate a zero plate is completely flat a 100 they kind of have that little ramp up at the bottom so this isn't exactly the smoothest thing in the world but this is what it is for right now i'm gonna put this like in the middle position whereas the guy had it pushed all the way forward but we don't have i kept the timing stock i've kept everything stock so i'm probably just going to put this in the middle position moderately for the guy and then later on you know when he wants to put some power to it then we'll move the plate all the way forward we'll do some afc tuning and then we'll also up the timing to about 16 or 17 degrees all right we got it all back together right there now i obviously it needs, still needs a cap but what i'm going to say is if you guys are doing this make sure you don't drop any screws up inside there Looks like it's about to pour, which is fine with me because it's super, it was like 98 degrees. Oh, no. There you go, fuel off, fuel on. Okay. So I'm gonna start it one more time to make sure everything is good. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because we just put the, uh, the AFC back on correctly this time. There you go. This thing hasn't run in quite a while. So, now we check it. Look at that. So, as you can see, we're just shorting the fuel pump here. There you go. Now that problem will be resolved once we get the tone ring on. Um, unfortunately, just haven't had time to go and get, um, well, he just brought it, but haven't had time to go and grab the correct bolts that I'm going to need, which, what did he do with, oh, there it is. So we'll have to get this thing on, get this thing on, and then we have a crank sensor right here. So we'll mount all that up. Everything will work good. We have the fuel shut off here, which we're not going to use. He wants to do it mechanically because it's cheaper. Because um, we already have the shutoff solenoid, but the wire harness for all of this is over in the $100 range. So for me to just go through and, you know, put a mechanical one, it'll be a lot cheaper for the guy. So there you go. Spent about an hour on this thing today, making sure that it fires up. And then we'll just wait on the rest of the parts. So what I did the other day was, you know, sprayed some oil in there. 
and then now that it's moving it's spitting its own oil in there and it ultimately frees it up all right so while that thing's sitting over there we're waiting for rain i decided to pull the tarp off because the last thing i need is this windshield and the vin plate that's over there so i'm gonna start uh i, I got a tool kit from uh, harbor freight so this guy here and then these two and uh, got a nice good shot in the side so i'm gonna get this windshield off and hopefully not break it and then we'll have to redo the tint as well. Well, I was making good progress, but it decided to rain pretty decently. So we'll let this pass and I'll get back to it. I got one side completely done, which is that side over there. So get the top and the bottom is gonna be a pain. That's what I'll use him for. And then this side will be easy and then we'll be able to pull the windshield off. And I'm just gonna store it in the box truck for now. Cause I'm gonna take that to get tinted. And I know guys said 50% doesn't seem like a lot and not to like, just to go darker. But honestly, I don't wanna go super dark with the front. We're gonna do the brow to the legal mark at, I, I'm gonna go as dark as possible from the brow across. And then I'm gonna do, like we'll do the windshield first at 50% and then we'll do the brow here at five. So this up here will be pretty dark. But then all of this will just be like nominally, like it'll it'll be pretty good. So I just don't want it to look obvious that the windshield's tinted. And the reason I say that, because I get a lot of guys commenting about the tint and like negative things. And honestly, when you have bad eyes, like when your eyes are that upset over the sun, even with sunglasses on, the tint is a must. I, I don't care who you are, you can say what you want. But I've run a business and never had an issue with tint. Tint was the last thing that ever was an issue with the business. There was a lot of other things going on, but tint was not one of the things that I ever had to worry about. So in trucks, they usually leave you alone is what I found. The only time I've ever had tint problems was when I was personal. Like when I'm just driving the truck around as personal. When I was commercial, I never had an issue with tint. So I get it, guys do have issues with it. From my personal experience, I haven't. So I'll take the comfort over um, worrying about it any day. I'm not, like I said, I'm not super worried about it. This is this is a comfort thing to me. It's And with three kids too, it's kind of nice that you can get in the truck and it's just cool and don't have to worry about it being super hot. That was an empty puddle earlier. That's where the, he was getting his water from right here. And then this was tarped. So making some progress. Like I was saying, I got down to here and up to about here. So I'm gonna keep going with this thing. I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly, but I'm gonna start somewhere. So I'm gonna get all that and um, hopefully get this thing off without breaking it. Seems pretty promising, but it was nice when this was all hot, it was easier to get through. Now that it's been cooled down because it decided to rain, we'll see how it goes. All right, that's where I'm gonna leave it. I got the front done, well, front two sides done i just got to do the bottom and the top but i started kind of cracking some spots and uh i want to kind of be careful with it um i'm gonna wait until you know it gets sunny again let it get a little bit of heat under that tarp and then we'll go from there and right tomorrow we'll come back to this thing uh, i think he's got power steering lines coming tomorrow so we should be able to finish that thing up it is humid and hot as a motherfucker right now but whatever so we should be that thing should be driving out of here next week i just got to make the the main thing is getting the tone uh the tone ring on and the um the crank sensor because once those are on once the crank sensor's on the ecu will know that the engine works the alternator will work magically the ac will work all that stuff will work which i don't know i'm pretty sure this ac needs recharged i forget or not if i tore it all apart or not Pretty sure everything was unbolted. Coolant and power steering. And tone ring, and she's out of here. I guess that's pretty much gonna do it. If you guys wanna support the channel, go check out Mudflap. It's a fuel card without a fuel card. You just use an app, they save you a shitload of money. And your first purchase, you get $10 off. On your second purchase, I get $10 off when you uh, fill up for the first time. So that's awesome. And you save a shitload of money on fuel, especially if you're in the Midwest and you guys know how expensive fuel is right now. Go take advantage of that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Also go check out in the description. I got a bunch of Amazon links on there for things that I use. So it's all stuff I use and it's all stuff I'm passing on to you guys. So enjoy it. See you guys in the next video. Later.